Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. And I want to get this rusty Honda Big Red out for a ride and there's a few things I need to do to make that happen. Um, the first thing I need to do is really get it rolling properly. And I think if you guys remember when I put this front wheel on that it, um, it was missing a spacer. And let me show you the problem with that. See how the tire rubs against the uh, shock right there? Um, well, obviously, with that happening, it'd be uh, very easy to put on a head of steam, and the next thing you know, one goes, you know, head over tea kettle and gets damaged. Um, so, just quickly, quick measurement here. So, somewhere around. 0.6 and if you take my handy dandy piece of baseball bat that uh, is left over from an exhaust system pretty close so I'm thinking I'm gonna cut a piece of this off and make a spacer to go here So I'm going with a success here. So that was one half of turning it into a roller. The second half of turning it into a roller is one of the back tires was not holding air. And I found this is kind of small and narrow, but it bolts up. So I put that on. There should be a second matching one here somewhere. And for some reason, I'm not seeing it at the moment. So we're going to have to... Uh, put out a search and destroy mission to go find it. Wheels off, no big deal. You gotta love it when they fall apart on you. So, yeah, it looks like both brake shoes are out. Uh, this thing also seems to be dragging the back axle somewhat. That's why I've mentioned a couple of times, I'm not convinced how long this whole thing is gonna last. So I found the other wheel. I'm just going to smash it right on here and, and be done with it for now. I just want to get a ride out of this thing to see if it'll shift and, and everything else. I'm going to have to stick with the mismatched back tires because this is an 8 inch wheel. That's a 9 inch wheel and it, the 8 inch wheel will not go over the hub. So, um, one could say, well, that was a waste of time. Not really. By getting that floating piece of brake shoe out of there, now the whole thing rolls a lot easier. And I think, um, I think maybe the rear end from a um, corroded trash point of view, I think the rear end might be okay. So what we need to do to get this thing out for a ride, the last thing is... I need to put some kind of gas tank on it. Here's the gas tank that was on it. And uh, it leaks. And if you give it a shake, <laughs> it rattles. So, um, you know, not all that big on hanging a gas tank and having it drip gasoline on a hot manifold right next to, um, you know, my favorite parts, right? Nobody needs a crotch fire. So, I'm going to try to put this little guy on here one of the problems you run into though is uh, <laughs> how to orient it and how to attach it such that you know you can still get a seat on there and it's downhill and everything else I don't know I'll fuss around with it a little bit anyway when I figure it out I'll get it on there get a seat on there and hopefully you get a ride Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So old Rusty Red is sitting here, ready for a ride. I gotta tell you, I went through some pain and suffering to get this thing to start. Um, remember I mentioned it's rusty and the wiring is shaky? Well, I was underestimating exactly how bad it is. Oh. But anyway. 
anyway, let's get a ride out of it. Well, it's running. Is it gonna stall? Then I'll have to come back and get it with the uh, with the 300 four by four. Had a whole bunch of trouble. I'm not quite sure why, but it lost the spark. So I had to wire up the uh, portable ignition box. I kept getting these weird readings. Like I tested and I had continuity. And then I double check it and I had no continuity. And I tested again and it was back. Very common for wire harnesses that have a lot of rust. I got 200 bucks invested in this thing, and I figure I got the front forks, which are probably worth most of that 200 bucks. I got the CDI that I need, which is worth something if you're trying to keep. A Honda OEM. Keep the big red OEM. I got that side cover. Got that alone. It's probably worth a hundred bucks. So anyway, I'm the third. The engine actually sounds pretty good. The clutch is missing something. From a parts point of view, I did okay. But I gotta tell you, this wire harness is a real pest. I think this thing may have died of electrical issues. That might have been why it stopped running entirely. Because at one point, the red wire, red and black, was disconnected. So anyway, yeah, the red and black going from the stator to power to CDI was disconnected. So I have the feeling at some point somebody did some troubleshooting. Once again, when I was um, probing ground to the body, to this and that and the other thing, it was they were, the readings were all over the place. And they were so badly all over the place. Quite honestly, I gave up on the Harbor Freight meters and I, um, I took out, you know, the craftsman guy which, by the way, is no better than the Harbor Freight meters. Um, I even wasn't trusting my portable CDI unit. I dug out a pulse generator and a magnet to make that spark. Y you know, I mean, the thing, the thing was just crazy. Um, you could see I kind of opened up the wire harness here. Obviously, all those together are ground. This. Um, this is the pulse generator right here, right? Blue and yellow. You can see I ran wires to ground just to make sure the body had ground. Yeah, um, anyway. The good thing is it does run. Now it's leaking gas. Boy, if I had to describe this thing, I would have to say that it just doesn't like me. <laughs> of course, I don't have a... Um, a fuel shut off on it, so that's very bad that it's dripping gas like that. Okay. 
yeah you guys could see the wonderful gas tank I have hooked up here yeah this this thing is just just being an absolute pest anyway I'm gonna end this video here you know there are days when everything goes well and I mean it's almost like you can't do anything wrong and then there are days where stuff is just a pest today is gonna have to go under the, one of those pest days I mean I succeeded I got this running I got a ride out of it I got it rolling I got it doing a bunch of stuff I I guess I met my goals for the day but um <laughs> It's kind of like everything fought me every step. Anyway, not complaining, just talking factual. Um, I like you guys to know how sometimes things don't go as planned. Things don't go well. Things, you got to kind of fight your way through it. Many people just think, oh man, everything Harvey touches turns to gold. No, um, not true. Um... Sometimes, believe it or not, things turn out badly, even for Harvey. Now, of course, I got a perfect length there, so that just won't stay. Come on, stay. Yeah, I can't even quite get this great. I'm fighting the hose also, which is where the problem is. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. You know, some people don't mind if they drip gas on the ground. I'm really fussy about that. I don't, I don't like leaking fuel anywhere. Two reasons. First of all, it's not good to... Uh, to blow yourself up and secondly I would think that I don't the only stuff left is in the carburetor and secondly from an environmental point of view they say a couple of gallons of gasoline can mess up like tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of uh, gallons of uh, drinking water so you know let's do our best to spill no gas right it works better that way anyway once again, I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.